All right, guys, so what we'll do is we'll have um, the committee members um, just uh, introduce themselves and um, just their agency, like I'm Princess from DDS, co-chair, so that people know who's who in the meeting when we're talking. I started, who's next? Cress? Hello, I'm Cress Saccaroli. I'm uh, also uh, a new uh, co-chair for this, and I'm from DDS. <clears throat> I'm Peter Mason, um, uh, retiree that's overseeing the OPER initiative. And hi, Good morning, everybody. Sherry Knightley from West Region Resource Management. Sorry about that. That's okay. Go ahead, guys. <laughs> I guess I'll go next. My name is Gunnar Abrahamson. I work at DDS. I work for Commissioner Sheff as his executive secretary. Hello, Wayne Seidel, Director of Case Management, so part of the committee. I'll go. I'm Lauren. This is my second week. I'm very new, but I'm working in communications at DDS under Kevin. I'll go. Marina Derman, parent. I'll go. Dawn DiMatteo, parent. And I think that's everyone for the committee so far. And um, then we have a quorum at 11.04, we can start. Good morning. Good morning. All right, then we have a pretty full agenda, guys, so we want to get started um, right away. And um, let's... Uh, I signed up for a probe. So I was about to, st I, I'm watching the uh, ARPA meeting that's going on now. So you you can't sign up for five thousand one. Uh, okay. Let me just mute. Oh, hold mute. on. Thanks. This is this is um this is a public meeting, but there is no uh, public comment in the meeting. So I, Rick, uh, you know you're listening, which is great, but there is no comments um, for this committee. You can listen in. Uh, but there's no uh, opportunity to make a public comment. If you want to have any questions and stuff, we have on our website as a um, uh, on our upper initiative website. There's a email address that you can submit your comments to or questions, and then we'll respond to them that way. All right. All right. Thanks, Peter. And as All such, right. please make sure everybody. This is Peter Mason. Make sure everybody says their name. And um, as when you're talking, so that everybody knows who's talking and all that. Thanks. And Shannon just joined. Hi, Shannon. Do you mind in introducing yourself? Sure. Um, my name is Shannon McCormick. I am the executive director of the Down Syndrome Association of Connecticut. And I have a son who has Down syndrome who is 25. All right, great. Thanks so much. This is Frances from mm -hmm. um, DDS. So we'll start out. Peter, we'll have you give your update for ARPA. Yeah, this has been a pretty, um, a lot of stuff we're doing now is more in the background and stuff. Um, and so there hasn't been a lot of um, activity uh, publicly. Uh, we have um, looked through uh, the communica communication plan from both Deloitte and from uh, McDowell. Uh, we've been going through some of uh, the reports from um, McDowell, um, Deloitte. Uh, we did find that there was an issue with our rewarding work um, website that was supposed to start March 1st. That that has been put off for I think a week or two. I got to get the exact date. Um, hopefully that will get straightened out. Um, and then we just got word that our AT uh, assistive technology RFP, where we're going to be uh, looking for companies who will be doing assessments and uh, training of staff or assistive technology, um, will be should be going out hopefully sometime next week. Um, but other than that, it's a very short update this week. Um, so. Yeah. Yes. 
Sorry, I have a repairman here. So, oh, okay. <laughs> that was. Doesn't this is Princess DDS? Does anyone have any questions for Peter? Peter on any of his um, updates? Okay, moving right along then, we can uh, start with McDowell, um, give their update on communication planning. Hi, Princess, good morning, everyone. Um, this is Maura Fitzgerald from McDowell Communications Group. Um, so just a few updates for you, I'll try to keep it short. Um, our first newsletter um, has gone out this week. It was um, emailed today to all of the DDS staff and providers um, and went to the post office on Monday for to be mailed out to individuals and families and guardians. Um, and those should start to hit mailboxes probably tomorrow. Um, and as we discussed in the last meeting, the big kind of announcement coming out of that is is the um, the kind of rebranding or moving into the next phase of the ARP initiative, which we are calling STEP. Um, we're going to be doing this news newsletter every other month. So we are already in the kind of planning stages for the next newsletter that will be coming out in May. Um, so for this committee, um, you know, in the next um, several you know two weeks or so it would be great to get from you all what what update your committee would like to share in the newsletter um so that's just something to think about uh moving forward in the next two weeks um the video series that i believe i mentioned that that we are working on we are still working on it's um kind of been slowed up a little with you know trying to um schedule things with different people and whatnot. So the the taping of those video series will start the week of March 20th. Um, and three of the videos will be uh, filmed that week. And then um, I think the following week, two more videos will be filmed. So once they are once they are shot, they need to be edited and produced and the whole nine yards. So it will probably be, you know, uh, two to three weeks after the filming is done before we will be ready to um, to launch those. And before that happens, we will let you know what the plan is going to be for rolling out these these videos. Um, we also have, as Peter mentioned, put together a communications plan. Our plan runs through the next six months, so March to August. Um, our intention is to share kind of the next month's calendar with the committee in the in the previous month. So this month in your meetings, we'll be talking to you about the things that are going to be on the calendar for April. And that way we can start to get ahead of what's going out and get more proactive in our communications. So I'm just going to show you quickly a piece of this so you guys can get a sense for um, what we would like to do on the staff side of things. So if you all can see my screen, this is a, a matrix that we put together and so it's grouped, it's grouped by the audience. So this first chunk is are the, the things that we're going to be doing for individuals and families. And then the next group down, which is relevant to you all, is what we'd like to do for DSS staff. And I've highlighted, I, I tried to highlight, I don't know if it's going to be very effective, but the two blo blocks that you see or column rows that you see in blue, and then the one that's right below the second blue one. Those are things that we could use um, your your input on. Um, the first one is a biweekly short communication to all DDS staff. We'd like that to start going out and and I think we could consider today's 
um, email to the staff with the first newsletter to be kind of the first of those. Um, but this will be, um, you know, this is kind of in response to feedback that we heard that staff would like more information from the central office. So it's just a short, regular, weekly, every other week update to the staff on different things that are going on in the ARPA initiative. So um, if we can, if you could funnel, you know, feedback through either through these meetings to me directly or to uh, Princess and Crest to get feedback to us, we'll share that with the ARPA leadership team and kind of fashion up those biweekly um, messages for the staff. The next thing are, next two things actually are, are things that I found um, actually on the Colorado ARPA page. Um, they have a monthly step stakeholder spotlight and then a monthly step program highlight. Um, and we thought we would stagger them. So one would come out kind of mid-month every month. The other one would come out at the end of the month every month. So the stakeholder spotlight really is kind of, to me, is a staff spotlight, but it could also be an external stakeholder. And it would just be a short profile of um, of a probably in, in the DDS world, a, a, a caseworker, a case manager who has been successful working with individuals and families, maybe someone who has done something kind of innovative or interesting that can be shared with other members of the DDS staff. And these would these little vignettes would live on the DDS website and the the intranet, and you know potentially we could put them out on social media depending on you know the relevance for a larger audience. And then the second one is just a monthly step program highlight, so kind of similar to the stakeholder one, but more on like a just a program highlight, something that's gone on in the previous month that. Um, that this committee and the ARPA leadership team thinks would be great to be shared with um, with the DDS staff. And again, that would live on the, the external website and or the intranet site and could potentially be shared on social media. Um, and I can just kind of show you if this will, is my screen switched? Can you see the Colorado? Thing. So these are kind of the things that we're talking about here, like this ARPA stakeholder spotlight. It's just it's just a, a quick profile. So it would be like a quick profile of a of a DDS case manager who's doing something fun and creative with their their case staff, that sort of thing. Um, so those are the kind of things that we would like to get some help from the committee on. And as Peter mentioned, we just kind of went over the um, stop sharing my screen. The communications plan um, yesterday with the full leadership committee. Um, so now that we kind of have a handle on the things that we're going to be definitely working on, we're going to kind of build out like what steps need to be done to get each of these things done, what tasks need to be done, and when they need to be done by, so that we're kind of keeping ourselves on track with getting information and turning it into, um, you know, a publicly consumable product. Um, and we'll get those kind of tasks and deadlines out to um, the committee chairs and share it with the committee so that you all know what we're working on and what we what we would like to get from the group and when we would need it by. Um, and I think that's our update for today. So if anyone has any questions, fire away. Hi, Dawn DiMatteo, parent. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you for that, Maura. Can you share, it was sort of hard to read. Can you share that with us through email for the committee? Thanks. Yes. And then <clears throat> also, can the committee, can we have access to see what the correspondence or the communication to the staff, DDS staff, is that goes out as well? Just out of curiosity, would you be able to share that with the committee? Uh, this is Maura from McDowell Communications Group. Do you mean share it with you in advance of it going out or, sh or sharing it with you, you know, after either contemporaneously or after it has gone out? After it has gone out, just, just so okay. that we, you know, have some insight as to what's going out. And then as far as the newsletter, if we mm -hmm. had suggestions like, 
you know, to get something out there since since the newsletter has started again and we're going to reach all um, the guardians or clients of DDS. The first thing that comes to mind is, you know, our RAC meetings. Can we have something in there if we have something that we think should be shared or we'd like to see shared on the newsletters? Can we submit that in to be shared? Yes, absolutely. I think this is Maura from McDowell Communications. Absolutely. I think the the best way to funnel information is for committee members to send that information to Princess and Crest, to the chairs Perfect. of the committee, mm -hmm. and then they can share it with us. Um, and then we can, we'll work it up into a publicly consumable product or put it into the next edition of the newsletter um, and get that out. And the newsletter will be sharing it in, in advance with, um, you know, the ARPA leadership team, obviously the, the DDS leadership team, but also with the chairs of this committee and the individuals and families committee. And if it works for timing, it will, we can also share it with the committee at large. Um, so this is that's, Peter Mason. So Don, I just want to touch base with what you're asking. It, it, the newsletter that's going out is regarding the step initiative. Okay. Um, so if if it's information pertinent to that, then definitely we would like to see it. If it's something that doesn't relate, um, I, I don't think that's what we're talking about, right, Maura? Okay. Right. This is Maura Fitzgerald from McDowell Communications. Exactly. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't know what rack meetings were. Yeah. So it's just. If, yeah. If it's related to um, to Step and the ARPA initiative then definitely we want to get it into this newsletter. So a newsletter, I'm sorry, this is Chris Saccarelli from DDS. Um, the commissioner did send out a newsletter today at 1015 with, with a missive um, about a uh, step. So um, I'm assuming we should uh, make sure that the DDS engagement committee members um, should probably get a copy of that. This is more of a show from McDowell Communications Group. Yeah, it, exactly. And it should probably, since, you know, it should probably come from the committee chairs to the committee members. This is, Lauren, says, this is Peter Mason. We'll more, sure did that we show that, that at the last that. meeting? I can't remember. This is more of a show from McDowell Communications Group. Yes, I, I showed the newsletter to this group at the last meeting. Yeah. But Chris, um, in terms of the RAC, meet, the RAC um, committee members, I'm not, I don't know, you would know better, but I, I'm not too sure everyone, is everyone a parent on that committee so that they would get this? Or are there other members on there that may not be part of DDS in that way that they would not get the newsletter? So, um, um, per se, they don't have to be family members. Um, you know, they are appointees by different entities. Uh, the majority of them are. I think all of them that I know of are. Um, but, um, you know, I think there's, like we've talked before, there might be different communications going out uh, to families versus what's going out to um, DDS employees, um, you know, uh, different uh, messages for different uh, for different groups per se. Some might be more technical for different entities than just case manager and stuff like that. And that would be part, I would assume, part of what this committee with DDS employee engagement is doing. Um, so um, there might be some uh, missives going out um, to employees that might not be going to families per se. So there might not always be an overlap between um, the racks and and the employee stuff going out. So more of the, uh, this is Peter Mason, the racks are the regional advisory committees. So each region has an advisory committee and they, they, they meet with the regional director. Um, and uh, it's a forum for um, the committee to 
provide advice and uh, to DDS and to the regional directors uh, on certain on different issues and stuff. So um, I think it may be something that we want to talk about to make sure that whatever those other stakeholder groups are, that they're seeing uh, that they also get to see this newsletter. Um, so this newsletter that we we produce because we wanted to get this started and we want to make sure that the next one that's we do, which should be in, a, um, I think we were looking at somewhere around April ish. Uh, we want to make sure that the committees have more say into that. We wanted to make sure that this one went out to get get it, get things started um, so that th they now would have a little bit more say so that we're trying to jump ahead uh, and be more proactive in terms of getting input from the committees. This is Mark Fitzgerald from uh, McDowell Communications Group. Um, yes, that's true. And also just for this committee's um, edification, the newsletter was, I mean, Cress, you weren't you weren't um, a committee chair at the time, but the newsletter was shared with Princess in advance as the as the committee um, chairperson. And Princess gave um, gave us some really great feedback on some of the language and the wording um, in this newsletter that's going out this week. So thank you very much for that, Princess. And um, we'll, you know, that I think that will continue to kind of be our um, our MO with this is sharing the newsletter with the committee chairs, and then we can discuss it in one of these meetings. But also, you know, if the committee chair want chairs want to send it out to the committee at large for um, for comment and then committee members can you know send that feedback back to the committee chairs and you can kind of bundle that feedback and send it to us that would be that would be helpful this is princess uh dds here that I, I agree that would be helpful um just like peter said we wanted to get this um initial newsletter out with an overview and just to kind of get get um people informed and start the process. But I think moving forward, um, engaging the committee and having them, you know, give some feedback and recommendations would be helpful. Um, and uh, we're going to be uh, we'll we'll talk about that later when we get to our um, divisional um, efforts and, and communication and some action steps. But one of the things that we're going to be doing is creating a task list for um, the committee so that we have some more structure as to um, what we're going to be doing with some time frames around it. Um, and so the community committee knows ahead of time what's going to be rolling out. So we're going to be working with McDowell um, to make sure that we get that once um, they list everything out. All right. So does anybody have any other questions for uh, Maura? About the communication plan, videos. Um, well, this is Peter newsletter. Mason. So, more, so more, you're going to send the um, Excel spreadsheet to the chairs and then they'll send it out to the committees? Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. This is Princess DDS. So we'll move on to um, um, Deloitte so they can give our the, their update. All right, Betsy, Becky. Thanks, Hello, this is Betsy Bella from Deloitte Consulting. So we want to give you a bit of an update, and then we actually want to um, get some feedback directly from you on a piece we're working on. So as Peter noted, we've been um, doing some back and forth around really transformational model. So this is a collection of activities and pieces that taken together in an organized way are going to help DDS to move forward transformation as part of STEP. Um, I was going to say beyond, but part of the branding of STEP is that it is beyond, right? Um, and so coordinating back and forth on narrowing down from a really large list into something that's going to be more feasible um, and more streamlined. And I wanted to highlight that the transformational model is in motion because as they as that moves forward, it's going to um, inform ongoing work. But then also we are working on educational materials that are going to. The transformational model will be public. Um, people can look at it, but it will be 
um, somewhat bulky. There's a lot of content in it, and we want to make sure that people are able to access the elements that are most important to them and that the messaging is going out pretty clearly. And so as we think towards, sorry, I had notes and they disappeared. Okay, as we think towards what does the educational material look like, um, we wanted to share some of our initial thinking with you all and get your insights into what might make sense um, as we build up the content. Okay, here we go. So I just wanted to pull up on screen. Here is our initial outline. So we're developing three educational materials, each for a separate audience. The audiences we've identified are providers uh, written for executive and administrative staff, DDS staff with a focus on regional leadership. Um, and this one would also go out to and be aimed for groups like Pratt or uh, neglect and abuse, uh, quality management, right? Sort of a, a pretty broad brush, but directed more towards leadership, but then included for the broad brush. And then a document for DDS case managers, case manager supervisors, and in there as well, regional resource managers. So the thought is sort of, obviously providers need a lot of information on the transformational model. And then within DDS staff, a broader general message for across to make sure everyone's up to speed and then more focused and targeted for case managers, case manager supervisors and regional resource managers who will be really in the thick of helping to support some of these provider transitions, right? It'll impact everyone, but they have a more active role, so to speak. Um, and then we have not forgotten individuals and families. So important, never want to leave out. Um, and so we're coordinating with McDowell on the development of information about the transformational model for that group as well. Now, as we noted, the transformational model itself will be available. So these documents are going to be much briefer. The goal is for them to be engaging and in a more conversational tone, right? When people are trying to decide which thing they're going to put their attention into, um, something that speaks out to you, that grabs your interest, and that's not as much of a slog to get through, is going to rise to the top of the pile. Um, all right. And then to make sure that people have the more adept information, it'll link to those other resources. So there'll be spaces where it says things like, you know, if you would like to learn more about this detail, please read the moving on guide or look at page XYZ of the transformational model. Um, really targeted guidance, not just sort of broader. The three main goals of these education materials are to educate, but of course, um, about how to engage in and benefit from the transformational model, create enthusiasm. Um, we recognize that we need to build buy-in both within DDS and beyond DDS, and then create more understanding of what's really happening. What are the goals? What are the benefits? Um, and so we're excited to talk to this group today because you all represent some of the audiences. Um, so we're going to walk through the planned outlines, get your thoughts on the general approach. I'm also interested in any specific things you'd want to see added or removed. Um, again, like we noted, the transformation model is still under development. So you'll see some placeholders um, that talks in terms of pulling in the elements of the model that are most relevant to the audiences. Um, but as we look at the overall framework, we'd love your input. Um, so we just went through the goals. Keep those in mind. You know, what thing do you think is going to help push those pieces forward? Um, what makes you excited about step the potential changes? Or where do you have some concerns that you think we can help alleviate? Um, and what do you think might help get others excited? And then where do you see sort of the most urgent gaps in understanding that we can help to try to fill through um, some of this work? So let's actually skip past that. We can come back to the provider outline as we have time. Um, but I'd love to actually kind of work our way backwards through the document and start with case managers and case manager supervisors. So I know this is the first time you're seeing this, um, but the idea is each has sort of the same broad structure, but then different sub bullets within. So what is moving on or step? Um, we do want to still include, we're shifting fully towards step, but we will include moving on just for people who've missed that messaging just at the beginning, and then you step through. Um, letting them know it's coming as part of ARPA, 
uh, highlighting what a rare funding opportunity this is. Um, really focusing upfront on the impact this can potentially have on people's lives. Um, highlighting the financial incentives because that is an element that we're really focused on um, from our support side. And then it moves into what are the benefits for people who receive supports as well as for DDS, DDS staff. Um, and so in the provider section, this is what is the benefits for providers. And part of that is the indiv supporting individuals, right? Um, but for case managers, a case manager, supervisors and regional resource managers, really that focus more on the individual um, and then sort of the DDS system, right? Freeing up more capacity, creating more options, and then here's where we have some of the, the placeholders, but that transformational model overview with a focus on case managers, case managers, supervisors, regional resource managers. Um, what is the model? What does it mean? Why does it exist? Why did DDS decide to create it? How is it gonna support transformation? How is it gonna impact you? How does it impact your day to day? How does it impact more broadly? And then what's your role, right? How can a case, we want case managers and others to understand that they have a role in this process. This isn't something that's happening to them. This is something DDS is working on that they get to be a part of. They get to help push DDS forward. Um, and so understanding how they're a piece of this puzzle. Um, and then really that focus on the importance of person centered planning, both from the element of it's so important for the individuals and case managers facilitate that, right? Um, and so we've heard in some input sessions, you know, case managers being excited about the potential to have more opportunities to connect people to, also concerns, of course, but we want to build on that excitement. Um, and then we'll have, like we noted, a sort of a link to more information so that doesn't have to all be in one document, um, as well as the opportunity to send questions to the open inbox. Okay, so that was a lot. I'm going to pause there. Initial thoughts, feelings, questions? This is Peter Mason. I, I, Betsy, I think one of the things that um, when I looked at this, it, it's for providers, it's for regional staff, and it's for DDS case managers, resource managers, and supervisors. So the individuals in terms of their piece, that that um, is supposed to be uh, worked in conjunction with McDowell. Is that correct? Yes. So it's not like we're ignoring the individuals. It's just that that's what we're trying to do. Absolutely. Hey. Um, Wayne Seidel here, DDS. I think item number three, the transformational model overview. I like the way it's framed. I think it hits on the right points. Um, I just don't think it can come soon enough. Like, uh, like this is great. But we need it like right now because the, all the questions are out there and they're waiting to be answered. So um, what's the time frame for that information to be ready? What what does that look like? Just curious. It's great. By the way, I would do I, I, I can't emphasize that enough. But. So we are actually experiencing a few shifts in the time frame um, in an effort to get more input onto the development of the transformational model. Um, but we are getting the framework, right? That's why we have, that's why we're outlining the educational materials before the transformational model is even ready, right? Um, we're building out the formats so that as soon as the transformational model is ready, this can come really quickly on the tail, which is not a direct answer to your question. Um, really, the answer is that the timeline's just shifted today and we haven't had a chance yet to work out the exact dates yet. Okay. Wayne Seidel, DDS. Um, OK, the, the questions are out there. Uh, we've been hearing about transformation, transformational models and all of that. And and so, you know, people want to know what specifically like, what does that mean? And um, those questions have been asked for a while. And so we I think um, there's been some various efforts to try to help people understand what that is. But if that's not even solidified at this point, um, I just think I think we're on the right track with with the way this is framed. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing that progress and get out there. And I guess my only uh, piece of feedback is that, you know, it, it can't come soon enough. Like the sooner the better would be great. So. Betsy Bella Deloitte. 
absolutely. Thank you so much for reiterating that. Hello, Chris Saccarelli, DDS. Um, Betsy, I, I, I like the outline. Um, it's my first time seeing it. Um, uh, speaking on um, what um, what Wayne said, uh, I, I do think there is a uh, push pull of a uh, pull. I want to have the information now push. I want to have um, some say in it before it comes out. And I think that's what we're trying to find this balance of um, uh, instead of it just coming down um, uh, as um, this is what it is and this is where we're going. Uh, we want to have uh, a little bit of input well, from uh, key people um, around the department and let people have um, some input in it before um, it comes just flowing downhill. So I understand that push pull and that I think Wayne is, is causing some of the, the delay in uh, getting this stuff out post haste. Uh, this is Princess DDS. Um, I, I really like um, the outline as well and I agree with Wayne and, and Chris what they're saying. These are some of the direct questions that folks are actually having. So you guys definitely are hitting the mark for sure. Um, and uh, it'll be um, helpful if we can participate in answering some of these questions too. So that way the messaging is um, clear and concise and it's not too convoluted for folks. Uh, less is certainly more um, for sure. So. I would just want to make sure that it's um, just not an overwhelming amount of information and just kept very simple, just as simple as the outline is here. So, Princess, this is Peter Mason. Um, would it be helpful for Deloitte to um, answer these questions and then give it to the committee to review, or would it be better for the committee to answer some of those questions and give it to Deloitte? I would assume it would be Deloitte giving it to you and then revising, but I, you know, I'll leave, leave that up to the committee. Uh, Princess DDS here. I would, I would want, I would think that it would be best to have Deloitte give the initial, um, you know, proposal of the product, and then have the committee look at it and provide feedback, recommendations, any changes to tighten it up and, and send it back. Betsy Bella Deloitte, um, that sounds great. Actually, will once we get our timelines reconfigured. Princess, if I could reach out to you and we'll make sure we get on the agenda. Um, to Wayne's point, we want to keep moving forward uh, while still gathering the input and feedback. That was wonderful. This is Princess DDS here and definitely I uh, want just just to to what uh, Wayne said to make sure that we have some um, time frames in place too, because I think this this piece of it is really more of an urgency for for folks, for case managers. Um, just because we have uh, families calling and asking questions now. Um, so, you know, this will be helpful. Amazing. So this is Peter Mason. I, I would also ask the committee um, if they have any additional questions they think should be added to this. Um, and uh, it sounds like they, you know, they hit most of those pieces, but if there are any that um, should still be, that could be added, that would help in terms of clarification, you know, that would probably be a help for Deloitte as well. Yeah. It, so it's Marina Derman. Um, I have two thoughts. One, I, I like this very much. Um, one of them is, I think there's, it's, it's almost the least important part, but it's sort of important to get through part one in a smooth way because the con setting up the context of your, you're sort of introducing these acronyms of, oh, there's STEP, which is sort of like moving on, and then it's kind of part of ARPA. And I'm still amazed at the number of people I run into who don't know or remember what ARPA even is. So if you don't, if your head isn't around, oh, there was this thing called ARPA. Do you remember three years ago when there was COVID funding called ARPA? Well, this is connected to that kind of. So anyway, that background actually isn't the most important part, but understanding that context to why there's a bunch of money that's going to help here. It, I don't know how to smoothly get past that, but I think that's an important part of the lead in to the actual good stuff. So anyway, just leaving that in your lap as as something to say. And then I also wondered, 
is there if might you think about switching parts two and part three and maybe not but i'm just looking at part two and part three and saying there's in in my head i wondered about saying wait here's this model we're going to we're going to suggest to you and here's what we think we'd like to see we're going to see changes and then come back to and here's why we think those changes are going to be valuable here are the benefits we are we foresee from those changes so i'm just going to toss that out there to the group to see if that order might actually be something worth considering to go one three two instead of one two three This is Wayne from DVS. I think that makes a lot of sense to me. Betsy Bell from Deloitte. I saw some other nods as well. Um, yeah, no, I think that's a great idea. And I know even though it takes up a lot of space in the outline, it's, it's like that's what will be in the paper. Right? It's like it'll be it'll be quick. Um, we're getting increasingly better at how do you move through that? Like there's just there's money. That's all you need to know. Um, um, I think so to that question on two and three. So as you look at the other outlines, um, so here's the regional leadership broad brush GDS staff. Um, and I think they're flipping them would make sense as well. Um, it's very similar. What are the benefits for people who do sports? DDS, CDS staff, transformation model overview, focus on EDS. Um, and then as we get into providers, I think there we might want to keep it as why should I participate? What's the benefit? And then the model overview. Um, but this is something that I think will be really interesting as we build out, looking at where does it make sense to, to shift things around. Um, thank you for raising that. Okay. Are folks ready to look at the broad brush DDS staff overview? So really similar. Um, the the quick conceptualize moving on step piece before moving into, I think we're going to say now, the transformational model overview that focus on DDS. Um, so again, it's how is it impacting my day to day, the day to day of my staff. So if you're looking at from more of a leadership perspective, you know, we want to make sure that leaders are aware of what pieces might be moving and where maybe folks might need a little more time in different ways. Um, some processes might shift a little bit when there's big transformation happening, right? Um, and then what is my role? Again, the importance of an active participation in this. And pulling out specific elements of the model um, that are going to align to it. Um, and then the benefits for people who receive supports, um, very similar to what will be in the case manager uh, version. And then again, like we do envision that DDS staff would have access to all three of these documents, um, and there'll be some similarities between them, of course. But this is not a. We want to create tailored documents, but we don't want to fence anyone out from information. OK, so do we think that there needs to be? I mean, where a lot of the differentiation will happen is sort of focusing more on the elements of the transformation model itself. Um, where, for example, in the case manager resource manager piece, it'll be very much focused on how do you work with providers as they're going through their transformations and in the broader DDS brush. It'll be highlighting some more of the elements that are more DDS specific and moving forward. Um, sorry that I wish I could just like have it all open together, right? Um, but the where else do you think that we maybe need to differentiate more um, between this version and the version that's focused on case managers, case manager supervisors, regional resource managers? Or does this feel right? Princess DDS here. I'm sorry, can you ask that again? What do you need to focus this particular um, component of the outline? Yeah, Betsy Bella Deloitte. Thank you, Princess. Yes. Are there elements in here that you or other ways we want to differentiate between um, the DDS staff broad brush and a case manager piece? Um, you know, for example, are there So we've had some conversations around 
like how important it is to make sure that there's information out broadly to staff, including um, things like neglect and abuse. Uh, so they're aware that you might have people moving into situations of their own choice because they're ready for it, um, but where you know they might be relying more on assistive technology rather than face to face staff. Um, and to be able to support understand that. And I don't know that we'd want to get into that sort of level of detail in the document. Um, the documents will also, there will be virtual informational forums. They will be live, people will be able to participate. We'll also record them and make them available. Um, and I think in those forums, we'll get into some more of that nitty gritty for some of the more specific roles of DDS staff. Um, but just as we think about this more general outline, um, with a focus on regional leadership, but with a broader DDS staff brush. Do you see any pieces that are missing or are there elements of that you really want to make sure we hit hard? Anything like that? This is Peter Mason. I, I think, Betsy, there is that piece of licensing and, qual and quality and abuse and neglect issues that I think have to somehow be highlighted. Um, so, if if an individual is going to be staying um, by themselves in a CLA uh, with remote supports, um, that that doesn't necessarily mean that the person's alone. Um, and you know, if their plan says that they need to have supports, we need to make sure that the quality and licensing understands and, and abuse and neglect understand remote supports is the support. It doesn't mean that they have to be physically there. And I think that that distinction could be an issue for some people, um, especially I think how things get worded on the individual plan um, could then cause issues um, that if the plan wasn't changed and they're trying something, um, you know, if something happens, God forbid, you know, that, you know, the provider needs to understand that, you know, all of DDS isn't going to come down on them um, because somebody forgot to put in the plan. This is what it was supposed to do. Um, so I think, you know, that that piece really needs to get uh, focused as to, you know, what this means to DDS as a whole in terms of some of these changes that will happen. Um, obviously, you know, we don't want to put somebody in an unsafe condition. That's not what I'm talking about. But, you know, if someone uh, is home with remote supports and somehow burns their hand on the stove for whatever reason, um, and that gets caught because the remote support should be able to find that, you know, you don't want them to then say, well, there's no staff there. So now we're going to call abuse and neglect. So I think that kind of conversation needs to be happening. And, and I don't know where that has, but I think this is the start of how to start addressing some of those um, issues that may come up. Princess DDS here, Chris has his hand up. Go ahead, Chris. You're on mute. Sorry about that. Um, maybe um, something that it, it seems like the, the the outline really mirrors um, the same between the the leadership and the case management and resource management one. Um, maybe a suggestion for the leadership one, um, and I hadn't thought about this before, is um, impacts on procedure, policy, and um, practice. Uh, that people need to be thinking about. I know there's there's some of us uh, that are, you know, um, Peter and I and others have been working on like the rent subsidy um, procedure because, you know, we're going to need to expand that and make sure it's in line with this. And there's others, abuse, neglect, you know, remote supports and things like that, but um, um, abuse, neglect. Uh, so I don't know if that is something that could be put into here that um, leadership needs to be thinking about uh, the impacts that 
the ones that we're proposing, how are we going to address those in um, practice or policy and procedure or regulation? Uh, Princess DDS, I do I do agree with you, um, Crest, that there, and, and just what what um, Peter is saying that an element of um, anything having to do with legal DDS legal should be involved um, quality for sure um, in uh, resource management. So anything having to do around our compliance uh, issues um, or you know policies as well. Uh, we do have, uh, I mean, this there are these are existing measures that are. That as Peter was describing um, within individual planning already. So this isn't new. This is something that we already do as far as um, if, you know, when folks are going through uh, utilization review um, where they um, require more intensive services or supports or there's something going on that we're, you know, taking a closer look um, and uh, we want to try something, there is measures in place where we do update the individual's plans you know, where we have to take things through HRC or th through clinical folks, have nurses look at it and other eyes, quality as well, to make sure that we are updating the plan so that it's, you know, um, reflective of, you know, addressing different areas, safety, you know, health, uh, quality, you know, to support the provider, what they need and the individual, what they need, but still give the individual room to make the progress and try to um, titrate, you know, staffing, maybe to do remote supports like Peter was mentioning or something like that. We do have those things in place, but uh, emphasis um, to highlight that somewhere in this would be um, would be great to keep it at the forefront uh, as well and make sure that we're always thinking about that in uh, the messaging piece when we're talking about this, because we do have some trainings around remote supports, assessed if technology is going on. And I don't think that there was an emphasis around policy and procedure um, in the discussion, open discussion, maybe in the in the weeds of it, you know, um, yes, but keeping it at the forefront, highlighting it somewhere went, might be better. And Wayne had his hands up, sorry, Wayne. No, not a problem, Wayne Seidel, DDS. Uh, the only other point I wanted to make in regards to the leadership and uh, change, not so much about changes or adjustments, um, but reflective of the points preceding me and and such is also about timing. Um, you know, back to Cress's point about the push and pull, I would love stuff and information to go out to case managers like immediately as soon as possible. But at the same time, I think it's really important to um, to address the DDS, uh, the regional leadership part um, first in advance or as a first round for the reasons discussed, such as the effects of policy. And sometimes it's an opportunity to sort of vet those out in advance, but also so that um, regional leadership is well informed and equipped to be able to be supportive when questions do come up um, uh, from case managers. So just just a, a comment about timing a little bit. Princess DDS here um, and also just want to add to that when we as the committee are receiving and reviewing it'll be helpful for us for uh, helpful for us to know who's already had eyes on this and um, has contributed to it so that way you know uh, we might recommend hey you know has legal uh, had a look at this has they have they chimed in you know uh, clinical quality or and such that way if we already know you know we can It'll be helpful. That's the Bella Delight. Um, I didn't want to like chime in between comments and ruin the flow, but as you can see, we're capturing Julia's also taking notes. Um, this is all really helpful and, and wonderful. Great. Princess DDS, does anybody else have any questions before we move on to the next? Or do you have anything else that you're um, discussing about this, Betsy? Uh, Betsy Bella Deloitte, we really wanted to focus on those two. The provider one also mirrors very similarly, um, but I, we can apply some of the same conversation that we've had there to that. Thank you so much. All right, Princess DDS here. So if no one has any uh, other questions uh, for the Lord Wait, then we'll move on to the next item in the agenda. Um, which is our divisional communication, just to uh, discuss and let the committee know like what's taken place internally at DDS to support staff and um, you know some uh, communications that's been going on, thoughts and considerations as to um, how best better to support staff, um, you know, staff wide, 
Um, and um, to start with that, Wayne, I'm just going to call on you to talk a little bit about the um, case management winter series that's coming out and you just pertaining to ARPA really um, and just any just to give the um, committee an update on that. Yeah, so two things. Uh, there continues to be monthly uh, discussion or room at the statewide supervisor meeting um, for monthly updates or what's going on to supervisors to to arm them with a little bit of extra information that they can pass along to their staff or be able to answer questions along the way. That will continue. Um, and then also at the end of this month, uh, we have in March, we have a, a series of Wednesday webinars available to case managers on a variety of topics. And on uh, the 29th, the very last Wednesday, we've got an opportunity uh, to present case managers with information about that that is relevant to them, uh, uh, ARPA items. And as I'm you know, hearing about the uh, Deloitte's plans and the efforts, um, and and the efforts from McDowell, I'm hearing a lot of great uh, additional information that can be offered there. Um, I'm appreciative to Peter who is willing to uh, help present that information and um, you know look forward to continuing to craft what is going to be shared at that webinar event. And I, I also want to say that's not the end. Clearly, that's not the end of the effort, but it's uh, an effort to get something going and get an opportunity um, uh, for case managers to hear about what's going on, but also to um, be able to ask questions and, and get the conversation going as well. Another opportunity, I want to say. Wayne, this is Peter Mason. Um, I know at one point we talked about uh, having um, more informal regional uh, gatherings of case managers to talk about things. Um, uh, did, did, have, have we talked any more about that? So, um, no, but that is something that I think still uh, is important to happen. And I think, um, you know, as I'm listening to the conversation around Deloitte's plans and McDowell's plans, I think there needs to be some integration we need to you know talk about how to mesh all of those plans together but uh, to your point peter the importance of having smaller as, as opposed to just a statewide communication or opportunity those smaller opportunities within regions amongst teams and and opportunities for case managers just pop in whether it's a regular event whether it is a roadshow event but uh um, uh, focused on specific ARPA related topics. Um, I think all of that is uh, an option um, and would be beneficial. Um, so that is definitely still something that uh, should occur. You know, I well, foresee something. If, yeah, especially this is Peter Mason, especially if uh, when we start getting plans and that starts uh, having case managers who have to then be part of those plans uh, as they're going through that, if they then could be some of the individuals who are available at those regional meetings to say, you know, this is what we we had to do, we had to this, this is some of the things that, you know, would, I think that would be really beneficial to the case managers. I agree. Yeah, those opportunities. You know, there's a, so, we're talking about a lot of different uh, efforts and communication opportunities. And so we just have to, as a group, I think here is an important time to talk through that. Um, you know, what has the value, the most value? Because there is a potential for oversaturation as well. Mm -hmm. um, so we just have to really be uh, cognizant of that. And, um, but to your point, Peter, I do think that the opportunity for smaller regional discussion is important. And I think um, really e e equipping regional management staff with that, um, with the information, the latest information, and feel comfortable to be able to talk about the processes is a key element of that. Great, thank you. Princess DDS here, I I, I agree. Um, you know, we, we definitely wanna make sure that um, moving forward that we are, including um, staff-wide um, messaging 
uh, as well to make sure that everyone else is kept abreast and up to date as to ARPA and kind of what's going on, what's it about. I think um, the outline that Deloitte presented is, will be helpful to um, in us helping to define uh, the other folks' role and how it's going to impact them and and uh, their their day uh, with their individuals too as well, so that you know folks aren't being left out. This is um, public as well, um, you know, uh, pub our public division. Um, so, and um, one of the things that we were talking about um, is uh, the road show you mentioned, which was really really um, a popular um opportunity that we we really enjoyed as staff um years ago when uh, we had opportunities to participate in that and it uh, wade and i discussed that uh it's helpful for staff to ask their regional leadership certain questions and you know have that dialogue um going back and forth there so making sure that we uh keep the uh, regional leadership updated as well that they're they're just as informed as we are and have inputs and uh, providing feedback to just making sure that we incorporate that in our um, how we you know obtain feedback from uh, internally with staff, and we're participating um, as co-chairs with uh, Wayne at the uh, case management supervisor uh, meetings to make sure that we're uh, getting we're answering questions, getting feedback, providing updates too as well. So that's another um, smaller internal one that we're doing, at least in the north. Uh, actually, it's statewide. So it's it's the case managers, uh, supervisors uh, statewide. Isn't that that's right, Wayne? Yeah, so um, so that's a good thing. And uh, also some um, regional leadership also participates in that meeting too as well from what I saw. Um, uh, there too. So that's another opportunity. Um, uh, moving forward to maybe uh, one of the suggestions was to identify um, some existing uh, uh, rolling meetings um, and just find the opportunities to be able to participate and join in and offer updates and offer um, additional supports um, for folks to ask questions. Um, so that will be helpful to get that feedback, bring it back to the committee to kind of say, hey, you know, let's make sure that we're answering these questions and focusing on this. You know, this is what they're, the, the staff is saying that they'd like to hear more about or they want some clarification on um, and just utilize those opportunities. But just real quick to summarize um, some of the other things that's been going on and what's to come, what we're looking at for and uh, communication internally, the efforts towards that. Um, one of the big things we talked about before was the project um, uh, working with uh, collaborating with IT and communications um, division uh, to build up our uh, DDS SharePoint um, website, DDS website and our SharePoint website uh, to make sure that we're building up our case management and resource management web page to improve messaging, you know, navigation, structure of the information and have folks be able to access information, documents, materials, um, you know, in the future as they need them. So that's one of the things that we wanted to um, uh, look at as well um, as, uh, you know, as folks receive uh, case managers and staff just receive tons of information. It'll be helpful to be able to access this information and really track uh, the information that they need and that, you know, so when we get this um, outline from Deloitte, we'll maybe there's something from there we can incorporate and, and add as documents. So some of the things we were looking at um, for messaging was the periodic new newsletter that we have coming out, which is great. Um, the road shows, uh, information forums were really good. Um, they're talking about recording some of the trainings so that folks can uh, look at, um, take a look at those to, to refresh, you know, answer any questions and get feedback, especially if they weren't able to attend certain trainings or information sessions that they're recorded, they can take a look at that. Developing talking points, frequently asked questions, um, incorporating slides, um, PowerPoint slides, cheat sheets, just, you know, whatever we can to ensure that staff are um, informed, oriented, and they have access to information, making sure that um, they get the information prior. Um, that was one of the things that we, we want to emphasize, that they get the information and um, prior to it rolling out to families and providers so that they are prepared to respond. Um, and also um, looking at um, other aspects of um, things. One of the things that did come up was um, pertaining to uh, when this transformation starts happening and case managers are now in the business or in the in the work of, you know, requesting services and supports, you know, there's 
um, several, there's multiple different pots of money from uh, various initiatives. And folks are kind of wondering, you know, uh, well, case managers were wondering, you know, how is this request going to look? So maybe also to developing a sample Pratt request, you know, for folks to to uh, look at and understand and understanding where the money is coming from, what pots that they're going to be, um, the money is going to be coming out of. That's getting into the weeds, but this is some of the things that they're asking us about already. Um, Wayne, you're aware of that. Um, just being, you know, just having to do with the day-to-day -day case management role. So, um, Wayne, can you tell me again the next case manager supervisor meeting that we're supposed to attend? Friday morning. This Friday morning. Oh, yes. Right. Okay. Um, and I wanted to also check in with resource management as well to touch base with them to make sure that we're getting some um, input from them um, and really involving them and getting supporting them as best we can. We've not had a chance to touch base. So that's one of the things that we'll be. I'll be making sure I do and bring to the committee kind of what their thoughts are and what they need support with. OK. Um, and then the next item on the agenda um, has to do with um, our action steps. And so our action steps um, will be um, creating a task list that I, like I mentioned earlier um, to help the committee, um, you know, uh, I, so that we identify kind of what is going to be coming up that we need to provide um, input and recommendations on and have time frames around those um, to keep some structure and make sure that we're, we're on track with that. Um, so we're going to be waiting to uh, hear back from uh, Deloitte and from McDowell once they identify those tasks. And um, we'll get that out to uh, the committee uh, and uh, go from there with that. As far as future agenda items go, does anybody have anything to add to the list? We definitely want to make sure that um, I'm going to be reaching out to um, resource management um, division to check in with them and see about um, their meetings um, uh, and make sure that uh, they have some input. Let us know where they feel like they need support. Um, uh, I wanted to ask, is that something that Deloitte um, is working with? Is, is resource management kind of incorporated in uh, as part of the stakeholders where you guys um, get feedback and information from as well? This is Betsy Bella Deloitte. Uh, for the input sessions with DDS staff, they did include regional resource managers. Okay. And then I would say also more broadly, um, we get ongoing feedback input and coordination with the regional resource administrators as well. Okay, all right, great. All right, I wasn't sure. Um, I don't know off the top of my head how many um, resource managers we had as part of those calls, hmm. but they they were invited and included. We certainly had some. Okay, Peter, um, Princess DDS here. Peter, do you know um, who's typically involved written uh, from resource administration um, that I should be following up with? In regards to what again? Uh, just wanted to make sure as far as DDS staff, just make sure that we have, uh, we're incorporating, we're including them. Uh, reaching out to the them. resource, the resource administrators. OK. Yeah. All right. So that's going to be. Um, one of the folks that I'm going to be following up on. Does anybody have anything else for future agenda items? No. <laughs> OK, all right, so we're we're over our meeting. Um, no one has any questions. Thank you, everyone, for your input. Thank you, uh, Deloitte and McDowell, for your updates. We have we seem to have a lot of things coming down the pike. It's, I'm really excited about it. Um, I feel like we're going to be um, answering a lot of questions coming up, moving forward, and kind of get the ball rolling. Um, so we'll be in touch. Um, we can adjourn at 12-11. Great. Thank you, everybody. Great. Thank you. Have a good afternoon.